Madam Mayor, we could go ahead and start now. Okay, we're going to call the meeting to order. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the March 18, 2020 special meeting of the Vista City Council. The meeting is now called to order, and as you can see, we are temporarily changing the way we're holding our council meetings. This is not out of panic, but out of precaution. We're committed to, the follow to following the advice of fe the federal, state, and county public health officials to stop the spread of the COVID-19 virus. So this morning, our city council meeting will look a little different with your mayor and council remote holding the meeting. What won't change is our commitment to keeping our city running smoothly, and we will make every attempt to assure that core city services are not greatly affected. With that, we'll do the roll call, and our city clerk, Kathy Valdez, will conduct our roll call. You to each respond after I call your name. Mayor Ritter? Here. Deputy Mayor Rigby? Here. Councilmember Franklin? Here. Councilmember Green? Here. Councilmember Contreras? Present. All city council members are present and also joining from the council chambers are city manager Patrick Johnson and city attorney Daryl Piper. We have one discussion item today. Uh, ratification of the local emergency proclamation. Our city attorney, Daryl Piper, will provide the staff report, and then I will ask each member if they have any questions or comments. So I'll turn this over to our city um, attorney. Thank you, Mayor. As you are all aware, uh, we are <clears throat> in the midst of a uh, pandemic. On February 19th, the County Board of Supervisors rat uh, ratified a declaration of a local health emergency and a proclamation of local emergency. Governor Newsom has proclaimed a state of emergency, as has the city of San Diego. And in light of all of these actions and the uh, threat to the residents and businesses in the city of Vista, the Director of Emergency Services, who is our city manager, Patrick Johnson, issued a proclamation of local emergency on March the 15th. Under state law, the city council is required to ratify that uh, proclamation within seven days, which is the reason for this uh, special meeting. Uh, the resolution uh, before you today is intended to accomplish the task of ratifying the director's uh, proclamation and extending the proclamation to that of one from the city council itself. If this uh, resolution is adopted today, it will uh, proclaim the state of a local emergency. It will <clears throat> authorize all special uh, legal functions uh, to be available to the city for emergency purposes. It will be forwarded to the state with requests for uh, suspension of rules and to provide any funding that becomes available uh, as a result of the various declarations of emergency. <clears throat> and it will also direct the Director of Emergency Services to continue to assess the situation and to respond as appropriate. The staff recommendation is to approve the resolution ratifying the local emergency proclaimed by the Director of Emergency Services. That includes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, this is Councilman Franklin. Uh, Madam Mayor, may I ask the first question? And Mayor, we have, have three comments. Did you, would you like yes, to Yes, I was going to ask the city clerk oh, for the sure, comments first. Okay. Please. Thank you. So we received um, three comments prior to the meeting. The first is from Stephanie Hurtado. The city of Vista should follow the example of the city of San Diego in regards to implementing and adopting a moratorium on all evictions during the COVID-19 pandemic. It is essential that the city of Vista take proactive steps to help contain this pandemic 
and putting a moratorium on rent and evictions is a step towards that direction. This public health crisis is causing many in the community financial issues due to lost wages, unemployment, and little to no hours of work. What comprehensive actions are going to be taken to address economic and social impacts to this public health crisis? Thank you for your time. The next is from John Jesse. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and ladies and gentlemen of the City Council, in response to the COVID-19 crisis and this emergency special meeting of the City of Vista, I would, like, I would ask that the City Council consider doing an emergency declaration allowing for temporary delivery for the six licensed medical marijuana dispensaries that are currently operating in the City of Vista under Measure Z. Over 25% of our patients are senior citizens and another 20% are people dealing with cancer and other medical conditions that have compromised immune systems. And with them being the most at risk with this pandemic, it would be prudent to allow for this. We understand that there is a process and we are about to turn our application in this week. Unfortunately, the process takes time that we really don't have during this crisis. Think of the senior citizens and other sick people in our community who use cannabis as medicine. Without this necessary response to the crisis at hand, we are potentially putting the elderly and sick into situations that can further put their health in jeopardy. The fact of the matter is, they can call deliveries now in Vista, but most, of it, most if not all are illegal. This may expose them to more harm from cannabis, which has not been tested and deemed safe by the state. I understand this would be a temporary measure and we would all have to go through the normal process, which most of us are already in the middle of. Just as in San Francisco, where recreational dispensaries have been shuttered because they are considered non-essential business, the medical marijuana dispensaries are allowed to remain open. This is because since it is medical, it is treated much the same as a pharmacy. I would ask for compassion for this segment of our community who needs this medicine most. Thank you for your time and consideration in advance. I pray that all of you and your families stay safe and healthy through these difficult times. Bless you, John M. Jesse. And the final, final is from Paulo Alescas. I am Paulo Alescas, a public health professional and advocate at Vista Community Clinic. First, thank you council members for your response in this crisis. I trust that you all are doing your best for the best of the community. Secondly, I would like to emphasize that the City of Vista should model and follow the steps taken by the City of San Diego and adopt a rent moratorium. It is essential that the City of Vista take proactive steps to contain this pandemic at a local level and implementing a rent moratorium will be a step towards that direction. Housing is a public health concern in this current situation. Many residents and folks in the community are facing financial instability due to lost wages and unemployment. Thus, we ask you to take this comprehensive step to address both economic and social impacts of this public health crisis. Thank you for your time. And there are no um, other public comments. Okay, and um, these items are not on our agenda, so we're gonna continue with the declaration of local emergency. And so I will take um, comments from the council on that. And I'll start with Deputy Mayor Rigby. Um, do you have any questions or comments? I do, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you. I want to go back to the city attorney's opening remarks, and he used the phrase suspension of rules, and that always makes me very nervous. And I went back through and I read the papers that we were given, and I didn't see anything particularly addressing suspension of rules, and I was wondering if perhaps the city attorney could elaborate a little more. Um. Councilmember Rigby, the rules in question are probably largely still unknown, but I can give you some examples. For example, uh, the rule that all public records requests must be responded to within 10 days is a rule <clears throat> that uh, would likely be suspended uh, at some point because we lack personnel to find the documents or to process them uh, in a timely manner. <clears throat> the, uh, that, that would be, a, I think, a, a prime example of a rule that is likely to be suspended. Uh, the Permit Streamlining Act, which also puts various deadlines on actions to be taken in planning, might be a rule that is suspended during this period of time. Okay. I hear what you're saying. I'm still not sure I would 
I mean, the PRA, I could probably agree with that, given, um, I don't know, it just seems a, a really broad brush without knowing particulars. Um, and I don't know if it's too cumbersome, I suspect that it is, to come back and say, you know, this set of rules or that set of rules or, or something. I don't know. I'm just, I'm a little uncomfortable with suspending rules without knowing exactly what we're suspending. But that, that's, that's my only comment at this time. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, Council Member Franklin. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I share some of Deputy Mayor Ridby's concerns uh, about the and, and asked and received in writing uh, some uh, information, but I would like to ask both uh, the city manager and the city attorney to uh, give any greater detail they have at this time about uh, any ordinary rules or legal privileges of the citizens that they expect to suspend or to be abridged. Um, and then what my thought would be is to ratify for a short period of time, uh, perhaps an additional week, and then uh, for us to have another telephonic meeting to review, uh, to hear more input from the public, and hear from anybody who's been adversely affected and decide whether we need to limit uh, powers uh, or cease the state of emergency. But um, hearing the a limited quantity of information that we have uh, about the powers and the necessity uh, for a state uh, of emergency, um, I, I'm not comfortable extending it for a great length of time to begin with. Um, Mayor, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. In addition to what uh, City Attorney Piper said, different things like canceling contracts uh, because of the circumstances that have arisen. We have uh, many contracts for venues, uh, let alone the Moonlight, the Jim Porter Rec Center, the Senior Center, uh, the AVO, where we have venues that we're no longer able to hold events because of the amount of people that is allowed at those venues or the social distancing that is needed. So we need to work through those contracts under force majeure and contract, uh, uh, make adjustments. Uh, adjustments for working conditions. As we've seen, 17 uh, now or 16 cities within the county have um, closed their, their doors to the public. Many are working remotely. So we're making adjustments to working conditions, working with the unions, and doing things that uh, are not the normal course of business. Um, Maybe City Attorney Piper has more, but these are the type of things that currently we're utilizing it for, and it may get more involved as this emergency goes forward. If I have a follow-on to that, which is, um, is it feasible in this time of emergency to publish uh, somewhere a list of actions taken under the, st the declaration of emergency, not with any great length, but at least one sentence, uh, you know, you know, numerous contracts canceled uh, at Recreation Center, uh, contracts canceled at Moonlight, uh, so that the citizens could have some understanding of the actions taken under this state of emergency and could understand the scope of, uh, in the way we're using these powers. Is that feasible? Absolutely. Um, our recreation staff in particular has been working for the last two days with every single vendor or client that's been uh, looking to rent our facilities going forward, either making adjustments, cancel canceling contracts, and um, we could definitely put that together in short order. I think it would make sense to somehow publish to the public uh, in a timely way, uh, the manner in which we're using these powers. Okay. Okay. So, is that is that is that all, Council Member Franklin? I can't tell. Yes, are that's are all we I done? Or should I move it on? That's all I have. <laughs> okay, Council Member Green. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, to uh, publishing how we're using these powers. I think that's a great idea. The other thing, and I just want to be clear, is um, 
you know, ratifying the, uh, you know, the local emergency proclaimed by Excuse the emergency Councilmember Green, I'm sorry, we're having yes, a little ma'am. trouble hearing you. Can you um, start Ooh. over, please? No problem. So I, I wanted to say, can you hear me better now by any chance? Yes. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Perfect. No problem. I do agree with what Councilmember Franklin said that I would like to have a list of how we are, uh, you know, managing the emergency services per se within the city. The other thing that I wanted to have clarified is when I'm reading this, it says that the proclamation will thereafter be required to be renewed every 30 days unless earlier terminated by the city council. And kind of in speaking to what Councilmember Franklin said is we'd like to maybe reconvene in a week and say, hey, how are things going? If we proclaim this or approve this per se, it looks like we do have the ability to terminate the state of emergency or possibly, you know, change it or something like that. What are the, uh, you know, I don't know, guidelines on terminating or changing as the situation is very fluid? If I if I might add, this is uh, Patrick Johnson, city manager. Um, I you know the the declaration goes for thirty days. Uh, I might suggest that if you're looking at doing something shorter than thirty days, maybe we do two weeks, as it doesn't uh, appear that this uh, COVID nineteen um, emergency is going to go. Uh, by the wayside within the next two weeks. Maybe we do it every two weeks if that makes you more comfortable. I think every week um, it might be a little more challenging, um, but I would suggest two weeks if the council was in favor of that. Um, and and I would, I'd be okay with that. I, I also don't want to have to have you change the current proclamation i don't know what the uh you know what the technicalities are of that is it just a matter of changing your proclamation from a 30-day proclamation to a two-week proclamation or is it just a matter of adding the verbiage of every two weeks the council will be convening to act on the situation uh this is uh city attorney piper there is no need to make any change in the proclamation since it simply provides, as authorized by state law, that it continues until you make a change. Every time you were to have a meeting on it, you have the opportunity to make a change in, in uh, at least in directions to staff. The ultimate termination of a proclamation of emergency would require you to find there is no more emergency. So gotcha. it would probably be a little while before you can make that finding. And this is Patrick. And if... If that's what you want, we can go ahead and give you an update at the next council meeting, which is March 24th, and kind of uh, give you an update on the situation, circumstances, and the way this is being handled via this uh, declaration. Uh, and then we can do that at every council meeting that we formally have. That would be completely acceptable to me. And uh, with that, I will yield the floor. And I hope you have a question. Council Member Contreras. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I mean, we're definitely in uh, a state of emergency right now uh, where we don't know how long this is going to last, and we don't know uh, how much deeper uh, the emergency uh, will become. So uh, I am 100% okay with the language on uh, the declaration at this point. Um, I do have questions uh kind of following up some of the public comment that we received um, because it's been a question that I've been receiving um, a lot from the public uh, through social media in regards to rent and evictions and a moratorium on that um, and utilities as well. Now, I don't know. I know this is a little bit outside of our scope, but uh, as city council, uh, is that something that we – Oversee. I know that the state has rolled out their own um, emergency measures on uh, evictions, uh, but what role does city council, the city of Vista, um, take uh, to, to ensure that we um, are following what the state is rolling out when it comes to evictions? Uh, so I, I would just like to get some clarification on that first. Uh, this is uh, City Attorney Piper. Uh, Council Member, we would be happy to do that. The, that particular issue is not on the agenda this morning, 
but mm -hmm. as soon as we've concluded the meeting, we'd be happy to get together with you and uh, give you some background on that uh, for your okay, consideration, perfect. possible future consideration. Okay, that would be great. Um, to add to the list of possible future consideration, um, I also want to take a look at how we're protecting our frontline workers uh, here uh, that are city employees, uh, specifically the frontline workers that I'm, I'm uh, taking into consideration at this point, uh, and if we you know, might need to expand it, but uh, looking at public works uh, because they come in contact uh, with a lot of um, different surfaces that a lot of people uh, use, and then also our fire and EMS. Uh, so that's, a, that's also something I would like to add uh, to a future discussion. Um, and lastly, as well, uh, you know, I know that our budget is, uh, you know, pretty tied up, so I just want to make sure that we have uh, the flexibility uh, necessary to address any challenges that might come our way. Uh, and so if that means that we have to, you know, allow for, uh, I, I don't know, uh, more flexibility with the budget, uh, if that's something that we need to discuss in the future, uh, I would also like to go over what that means um, at the city level if, if we need to be a little bit more flexible um, in case this, this uh, becomes a, a, a real emergency and crisis um, that we need to mitigate. So uh, those are just some of the, the topics that I, I want to review. Um, and outside of that, uh, I 100% support the language and uh, moving forward with, with the, uh, the declaration of emergency. Would, would you May want to make a motion for that? Sure. Uh, I make a motion that we move forward with staff's recommendation uh, for the uh, declaration of emergency here in the city of Vista. Okay, do I Madam Mayor? second for that? Yes, who's this? Madam Mayor, this is Councilman Franklin. I'd like to second the motion, but with the caveat that uh, we meet at least once a week uh, telephonically for an update from the emergency services director and the city staff, and so that the public may join our public meeting, receive an update on emergency services from the city, and we could have a weekly opportunity to review the state of emergency. Uh, but with that, I would, I would also second the, the 30 days or the, uh, the length uh, suggested by staff to continue the state of emergency. And this is City Manager Patrick Johnson. Does, does the, the goal okay was... That, uh, what, attorney and City Manager? <laughs> what did she say? Oh, yes. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the goal was that at our regularly scheduled meetings, so March 24th is our next scheduled meeting, that I would provide the city council with an update of where we're at as an organization and a city. Um, certainly we can talk about how the declaration uh, has affected us and what components of the declaration we have used, as well as uh, discuss how our frontline workers, um, law enforcement, fire, public works, folks that are working with the public still, like the senior center, um, as well as inspectors, uh, how, the, how that we've taken in safety precautions for them as well. So we can cover all that and give you an update to where you can ask questions and um, we can provide feedback to you. Uh, so that was the plan all along, that we would do that at your regularly scheduled council meetings. So I did want the council to know that, that you will be getting an update on Tuesday regarding uh, these items. And Mr. Johnson, uh, are you in a, would, would you agree that a weekly uh, brief call uh, in a, in a, on weeks that we don't have another type of meeting scheduled uh, during a state of emergency would not be an undue burden, but would be uh, in keeping with our responsibilities to keep the public and the council updated uh, on the progress of the state of emergency in the city? So we could, in my opinion, we could do it one of two ways. If the council wanted to, we could do a special meeting each week, or what we could do is we could provide you with um, an update, and we can also do a public update uh, via our website and social media on actions we're taking and do a weekly update that way. Yeah, I, I, I personally feel we have a duty to the public to have a special meeting on a weekly basis during a state of emergency. Madam Mayor, I'm, I agree with Councilman Franklin. I think a, I, I, an update formally, at least weekly, at least weekly, is is paramount. 
Okay. I, this is Council Member Contreras, and and um, I do uh, also agree with Council Member Franklin. I think at this point, it's uh, it's not too much of our time um, to give up just a little bit uh, during during the week to just update the public, and and if anything, because during the week we're also fielding questions um, from our our constituents, from our residents. And so, you know, there might be a new question that comes up, something that we need clarification. And if we know that every every week we're going to have, uh, you know, maybe it's not a full-blown uh, council meeting conversation, but at least it's a, a way for us to touch base in a public fashion uh, where we can also entertain and review more public comment. Uh, so I 100% I uh, think that in the state that we're in, uh, with uh, so many unknown variables coming our way, uh, that I am 100% okay taking the additional time uh, to make sure that we give the public a weekly update um, because this is a, a very serious matter. So, so, so I am I am 100% behind that. So this is City Manager Johnson. Um, we can go ahead and take care of next week's update uh, at the council, scheduled council meeting, and then we can schedule an sure. update on the off weeks that we don't have a council meeting for you with the public. That's not a problem. And will that and will that next week's council meeting be similar to this? Yes, next week's council meeting will be very similar to this. Uh, however, we would go with the normal scheduled time of five thirty. Okay. And do we um, okay. and do we plan to telephonically? Yes. Going forward until further direction, uh, telephonically is the way we plan to operate. Okay, so we have a motion and a, and a second with those, with the um, update. Um, Amendment. You know, second. Yeah. Amendment, thank you. And so, um, Kathy, um, the city clerk is going to do a roll call vote for that. Thank you, Mayor. Please respond with your vote when I call your name. Mayor Ritter? Yes. W. Mayor Rigby? Aye. Councilmember Franklin? Aye. Councilmember Green? Aye. Councilmember Contreras? Aye. That item passes unanimously. Okay, and, and since this is a special meeting, there's no oral communication. So um, if there's no more further comments, we're going to adjourn our meeting. So um, with that, um, is that all okay with everybody? <laughs> We're yes. We're adjourned. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you, all right. everybody. Thank you. Y'all take care. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Great job, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Bye.